Good afternoon, everyone. I am Zanina Napo, the Venture Development and Incubation Programs Coordinator of the FE Innovation Center, and I will be your host for this session. Welcome to this feature as part of this year's Philippine Startup Week. We are very excited this afternoon because it is actually our first time joining the Philippine Startup Week, the country's largest startup conference. Discover. This year, we are given a platform to introduce the FE Innovation Center and its programs to a larger community. To officially open this event and to tell us more about our programs, may I welcome on screen our Director for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, Mr. Roland Garcia. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Roland Marco Garcia. I am the Director for the FE Innovation Center, um, as well as the Director for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Um, today, I will be discussing the background of the Innovation Center, how it started. The FU Innovation Center is a 2,000 square meter facility that's a privately funded innovation center, uh, both as an incubator and as an accelerator for the FEU community. We are, uh, our domain is the eight campuses of FEU in Manila, in Tech, in Alabang. Diliman, Cavite, and a few Roosevelt uh, universities. And what we are doing is to create the next generation of nation builders, innovators, technologists, and entrepreneurs. We believe that nation building is best achieved through solving society's biggest problems and through creating jobs using technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. The mission is to create the next generation of nation builders by creating innovators, technologists, and entrepreneurs. The goal of the FEU group of schools is to be the most innovative and entrepreneurial academic institution. When we opened the Innovation Center in 2019, the ultimate goal is to be able to spin off as much startups as we can. However, there is a stint of um, uh, nation building by creating jobs, which are our four success metrics. Number, the, number one is the number of tech startup companies established. Number two is the number of tech startup companies funded. And the third one is the number of new jobs created because of the establishment of these startups. And because the research arm of the university is also under the Innovation Entrepreneurship Office, we are also vying for uh, number of patents that we apply for every year. The Innovation Center, next slide, is the Philippines' first academe-based venture builder. This is very different from different types of organizations in the startup ecosystem. A venture builder is an organization that internally builds startups. This model creates startups from the start, from ideation, right? Venture builders are not misinterpreted as accelerators or incubators in the traditional operational sense of venture capital firms. Instead, our focus is simply the process of consistent startup creation, internally leveraging on the research, leveraging on the internal resources of the university, and even the funding that is available internally in the organization. The difference between a venture builder and different organizations in the tech startup ecosystem is that venture builders, number one, aids with the business idea. Number two, builds the team. So thirdly, is to find capital. In this particular case, we have an internal venture capital fund. Thirdly, fourthly, we co-lead these particular ventures and we provide shared services. So the methodology is proprietary and the talent is internal. Versus accelerators, for example, and incubators, uh, they don't have perhaps some um, you know, process in the biz idea and the team building, right? But internally in the FEU Innovation Center, we are involved in the actual creation of the biz idea and the actual creation of the team, as well as the funding. And we co-lead these ventures and we provide shared services. We have three programs, flagship programs under the FEU Innovation Center in partnership with the AIM Dado Banatao Incubator. Uh, which we have access to their ecosystem, to their resources. The first one is Unmasked. This is a monthly event aimed to inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs. We feature the successful youth entrepreneurs and nation builders. 
Sec secondly is TechX. This is the monthly event of the FEU Innovation Center aimed at inspiring and creating awareness for the emerging technologies that are in the fourth industrial revolution, which are um, drone technology, artificial intelligence, for example, blockchain, uh, uh, AR and VR, right? So this is a monthly event where we feature practitioners in these particular fields, both locally and internationally. The third one is the Startup Academy. This is our flagship incubation and acceleration program, actually divided into three programs under the Startup Academy. So we've mentioned, we've already talked about um, data science uh, with Angela Chen. We also have uh, AI with Rafa Layosa, and of course, one of the leading data scientists in the Philippines, engineer Charlene San Buenaventura. We've also featured a lot of entrepreneurs uh, in Unmasked, which is uh, also a monthly event featuring nation builders and entrepreneurs. We've featured, of course, Prim, our partner, who is the executive director of the AIM Dado Banatao Incubator. We've had uh, Ralph Laiko and Angeline Tham. Angeline, of course, everyone knows, is the founder of Ancas. Uh, we've also had Rafa, and this month, actually this, this yeah, this month, we have Ryan of uh, Virtualahan, right, uh, who's also coming on uh, with the event. A flagship incubation program is called the Startup Academy. What we've done here is actually create a new OJT track that instead of students going into uh, the traditional OJT program where they work for a big company, what we did was we created the Startup Academy as an OJT track for future founders or aspiring tech startup entrepreneurs to give them a chance to build their own companies instead of working for a big one. We want to transition the mindset internally from in the FEU community, from employment to entrepreneurship, and we want to start before they actually graduate. In this program, they will have access to 20 plus industry mentors and experienced startup coaches. Uh, we are very proud of this because our lineup are not just theories, theorists. These are practitioners. These are experienced startup coaches. Uh, in the industry, and they, they have our, their own startups, and this is our number one criteria for picking which mentors and which coaches we are go, actually going to invite. The second is they have access to the Asian Institute of Management, Dado Banato Incubator Startups and Founders. They also have hands-on, customized, and focused mentorship. Fourthly is exclusive access to the services in the Innovation Center. As I've mentioned, we have shared services, marketing, for example, legal and accounting, for the startup founders to be able to focus on building their own startups. Fourthly is uh, exclusive personality, character, and mindset development programs. We've noticed that entrepreneurship is 90% mindset, 10% strategy. So it doesn't matter how much strategy or know-how you have in terms of building a startup, if you don't have the mindset of an entrepreneur or the mindset of a founder, the, the, the startup will not work. So what we did was we created uh, these modules for mindset development, for entrepreneurship, and to create the founder mentality for our startups. And of course, exclusive access to the different facilities in the Innovation Center. This is just a sample module. The, what we do, uh, this is a 12-week program. What we do is that we have the overture, we have ideation frameworks, we teach them business model archetypes, customer segmentation, market size, demand, um, basics of design thinking. We have focused, we're focused on product development. This week, actually, we are in product development already and branding. And of course, we want to touch on HR legal accounting and of course, the demo day. Uh, for the Startup Academy. The two mentors are myself and Prim. Uh, what we've done is we've created the ecosystem for the FE Innovation Center, and we've invited these AIM uh, Dado Banatao uh, incubator uh, startups to be the actual mentors for our undergraduate startups. The difference between mentors and coaches is that the mentors are subject matter experts, but the coaches are the one that actually handholds these startups. So we have we've invited um, Edward, for example, from DOST, uh, different uh, practitioners in the startup ecosystem. All of them are either startup ecosystem builders and uh, are actual startup founders. The current cohort of the Startup Academy is 160 students, which perhaps is the largest uh, incubation cohort in the Philippines. 
And we're proud to have present the 24 uh, startups in the first cohort in the verticals of agri-tech, the verticals of construction tech, for example, education tech, um, even startups that are tackling the sharing economy, the on-demand economy, for example, and even an AR VR startup that already has a working prototype and already has some customers. Our priority for these startups, a lot of startups fail, especially in the university. Our priority is to be able for them to have revenue even before they actually finish the program. In this particular case, we want to be able to retain these particular startups and make sure that these founders will work on their company even after they graduate. The team behind this, next slide, is myself as the director. We have Janina, as you've uh, met earlier. She's the head of programs. We have Mylene, who is the head of research. We are now building the um, an artificial intelligence lab and creating a lot of uh, um, research for artificial intelligence to speak spring out the venture builder focused on artificial intelligence and data science. Jasan is an associate and Carla is uh, the one handling our marketing. And this particular team, together with the AIM Dado Banato Incubator, make, make up the FEU Innovation Center. So that's it for me uh, to, to be able to show you a summary of what we've been doing, what the Innovation Center is all about. Uh, we are going to show you a short video uh, featuring the different actors in the FEU Innovation Center. Thank you. When I was pursuing my master's degree in the United States in 2012, I had the opportunity to attend a course at the Harvard Innovation Lab. And I was mesmerized with the entire design thinking, innovation, creativity, and this is what spurred my desire to establish one here at FEU. The FEU Innovation Center is the first university-based venture builder in the Philippines. And the goal is to be able to create the next generation of nation builders through innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship. In FU Tech, Dilimana and Labang, we continuously push towards impactful and commercializable research, thesis, and capstone projects. This is in line with our core mission of contributing significantly to the betterment of society. I was fortunate to have the support of management and the Institute of Technology here at FEU so we were able to launch the FEU Innovation Center in 2019, the first of its kind in the University Belt. The reason why we set up these programs at the Innovation Center is to be able to co-create the entrepreneurial and startup ecosystem in the Philippines. We do believe that entrepreneurship and innovation is one of the main pillars to create a first world economy for the Philippines. We continue to capitalize on our core strengths such as concrete technology, educational technology, construction technology, Internet of Things, and as we move forward, we will be expanding our capabilities in other emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence. To all of you students, we would love for you to become the next entrepreneurs, leaders, and innovators will contribute to nation building. We have a program called the Startup Academy where you will have experienced mentors from various industries engage with you. You will also have access to grants from venture capitalists and angel investors. We would like to invite all of you to create, to innovate, and to collaborate with us.
Thank you, Roland, for that very comprehensive briefer about the FE Innovation Center and its programs and activities. So our Innovation Center is entirely grateful for the support of the FEU Tech Management. At this juncture, let us hear from our Senior Executive Director, Dr. Ben Santan, for his opening remarks. Good afternoon. This is the first time that the FEU Tech Innovation Center joins the Philippine Startup Week, the country's largest startup conference. And I'm truly honored to be given this opportunity to address and to share this space with esteemed tech entrepreneurs of the country. I've always been fascinated by the power of the imagination, by the power of ideas, the possibilities, and how these ideas shape the future of society and the world. When we launched the Innovation Center in 2019, I told our students that the journey to a billion dollars begins with one idea. It could be the most ridiculous, most outrageous idea, but if given the right guidance and care, it could change the world. When you think about it, some of the biggest startups today were fueled by one simple idea and limitless imagination. Their creators and founders dared to look beyond the present and persisted to ask infinite what-ifs until the answers they got gave them a glimpse of the future they wanted to create. Often, the idea is tested by failure and desperation, but success can be just around the corner, and all you need is just one right turn and connection for failure to become success. Most of the successful startups were once ideas that lived in someone's imagination, but today, they have become billion-dollar companies. For so long, we had wanted a place where our young innovators could come together and talk freely about their ideas. So the Innovation Center is like a dream come true, because today it is a place that holds all these beautifully disruptive and radically imagined ideas. It is a haven where the illogical and the inconceivable converge to make the seemingly impossible possible. And it is the convergence of ideas that will make the Innovation Center a catalyst of change for the world we live in today. The Innovation Center was conceptualized as part of our commitment to produce students who will contribute to the betterment of society, a makerspace that provides the technology, the tools, the network to our students to allow them to create, collaborate, and innovate. Armed with a fervent desire for innovation, the Center will provide the students with a launch pad for projects that will make a difference in their lives and in the lives of others. We thank the organizers of the Philippine Startup Week DDI, DOST, the ICT, and QBO for the opportunity to present the programs of the FEU Tech Innovation Center. Thank you. So that's um, Senior Executive Director Dr. Benson Tan. And now let's hear from the FEU Senior Vice President for Corporate Affairs and one of the main visionaries of the FEU Innovation Center. Attorney Gianna R. Montinola. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the first time that the FU Innovation Center participates in Philippine Startup Week. And we are happy to be able to showcase what it is we do here. Far Eastern University espouses future ready learning a commitment to shift content to skills and output-based learning to prepare our graduates for the future disruptive world. In further support of the potential and creativity of our students, we launched in 2019 the FEU Innovation Center. We are the first academe-based innovation accelerator. We would like to provide assistance with your creative ideas and bring them to commercialization, allow you to have the guidance of mentors from established industries, and give you access to venture capitalists and angel investors. We would like to thank our partner, the Asian Institute of Management Dado Banato Incubator, for its efforts to advocate on innovation and entrepreneurship. We would like to also congratulate all who have joined us and continue to join us. May your ideas continue to inspire us. To the FU community our, and our stakeholders, 
we encourage you to come and explore opportunities to create, innovate, and collaborate. Finally, we would like to thank the organizers of the Philippine Startup Week, the Department of Trade and Industry, the Department of Science and Technology, the Department of Information, Communication and Technology, and Cubo for featuring our FEU Innovation Center. Roland mentioned earlier that the core mission of the FE Innovation Center is to create the next generation of nation builders by creating innovators, technologists, and entrepreneurs. One of the flagship programs of the center is the FE Tech Startup Academy. It's the incubation program where aspiring tech founders will learn the basics of innovation and new venture creation. Before we start our panel discussion, let's watch this to know more about the FE Tech Startup Academy program. The Startup Academy is a 12-week intensive program that introduces the essentials and the basics of entrepreneurship, the basics of ideation, the basics of fundraising, marketing, market segmentation for aspiring startup entrepreneurs. A student who joined the FEU Tech Startup Academy will have access to the following. One is industry experts and mentors. They will have access to AIM Dado Manatao Incubator Startups and Founders. Third would be focused and hands on mentorship. And they will also have exclusive personality development sessions. And of course, exclusive services to the facilities of the FEU Innovation Center. Hi, I am Regina Alejo and I am co-founder of Dwarf Technologies. My name is Rolly and I am the coach of Annotate, a construction tech, and Mech IT, a platform wherein car owners can request mechanics. Startup Academy serves as a stepping stone for the students, for these young tech entrepreneurs, for their ideas to become a reality. I really like to help others, particularly when I saw the same passion we had when we are still starting on startup business. When you have an idea, follow Lean Startup Methodology. In creating your hypothesis and uh, testing this hypothesis is very important. To be honest, it's, it's one of the best uh, programs in any academic-based uh, incubation programs in the Philippines. Because what we've seen is that 90% of the startups and businesses fail because there is no formal framework, there is no formal program to assist these founders from building their idea to marketing their idea to testing and validating their idea. The reason why startup projects from the university right, fail is because, uh, number one, there is no market validation. Right? There is no revenue and there is no customer contact. Right? And what we want to do in the Startup Academy is for the startup founders that qualify to enter the program, is for them to have real revenue, for them to really know their customers, for them to really understand if their business idea is viable to begin with, and from those to systematically and methodically help them create their idea from start until commercialization. I believe that the Startup Academy of FEU Innovation Tech Center is a great platform for future founders who want to learn, build, and measure their ideas. We get to share to them the ideas that our mentors have taught us, the learnings that we need to consider when we want our idea to become a reality. So given the data that you have, you could learn from this and create a product that designed for your customers. The FE Innovation Center has three major flagship programs. These programs are in partnership with AAM Dado Balatao Incubator. So the first one is the TechX. So it's actually an event that aims to create awareness on deep tech or emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, data science, 
Second is Unmask. Try to feature successful young entrepreneurs in order to inspire more young people to consider or go into entrepreneurship. And last one is the FEU Tech Startup Academy. It's actually a new OJT track that we offer to serve as a platform for aspiring young entrepreneurs tech entrepreneurs have access to an ecosystem that we have built in order for them to pursue business ideas and turn them into successful business ventures in the near future. I envision a world that the startup founders will create a better job, better opportunities, and a better nation. I think the main vision of the Innovation Center, I want to see the next Uber the next Netflix, the next Grab, the next Facebook that will come out from the Innovation Center through the brilliant innovation ideas and the research that will really create an impact in the world. We would like to invite all of you to create, to innovate, and to collaborate with us. This afternoon, we are featuring some of our homegrown startup incubate, startups incubated by the F Innovation Center. To officially introduce our panelists, our first speaker is the co-founder of Dwarm Technologists, Regina Alejo, co-founder and artist of Sining, Joseph Tumbali Jr., co-founder of Aqua Phoenix, Christian Brian Matira, the co-founder of iMoto, Emil Osenia, and the co-founder, chief, chief product officer and lead artist of Pashal, Vanessa Miro. Yours truly will be moderating this panel. Okay, as our usual first question, I would like to, to, to ask our startup founders here to tell us more about yourselves and your startup company and maybe how or what is the problem you're trying to solve and how your solution works. So maybe we can start with um, the Dwarm, Tech, Dwarm Technology CEO, Ms. Regina Alejo. Hey. Hello everyone, I'm Regina Alejo. I'm the co-founder of Dwarm Technologies and I'm also the head of materials and design engineering. Uh, drones became a big hit this past few years, especially way back 2017, when my friends and I are just figuring out a topic for their research. And 2017 pa lang, we are already concerned on the preparedness and the awareness of the Philippines when it comes to disaster management. Kasi diba, we've been hit by Undoy and Yolanda. And we always have this thought na it's better to undermine preparedness than to overestimate it. So by this, we started wondering if what technology can we add to the drone? Because drones that time are very cheap. They are very accessible. You can buy them from hobby stores. You can buy them from malls. And they are very user-friendly na kahit bata, kayang-kayang magpatakbo ng drone. So we started researching on it and we discovered Swarm Technology, which is a very advanced tech and some people say na it's a military-grade tech. So we decided to embed it on the drones and imagine having three drones doing three different tasks to finish one objective, to finish one goal, and at the same time all acting as one. And that is how Dwarm started. Okay, thank you, Regina. We'll discover more about um, Dwarm Technologies later, but I believe everybody will agree with me when I say it's very relevant, especially with our times nowadays where we are just recently hit by um, um, sunod sunod na typhoons. Okay, and next one, I guess I'll ask first the co founder and artist of Sining, Joseph. So, yeah, go ahead. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I am Joseph Tumbali Jr. I am actually a dancer, member, and junior choreographer of Team Package Makers who won the Vibe PH3 Championship and represented the Philippines in Los Angeles, UA last 2019. Currently taking up BS Computer Engineering at FE Institute of Tech and currently taking up my internship under Startup Academy that led me to co-founding Sinning. And as an artist, alam ko yung pakiramdam na kulang yung appreciation and opportunities na nabibigay sa mga fellow artists ko. We also lack the platform to share our talent and product locally to be viewed by the local audience. 
So that is why Seeming was made. Seeming is an avenue or a platform that supports and uplifts the Filipino artists and their arts, whichever type of art it may be. That's the answer. All right. Thank you, Joseph. We'll get back to you later. Um, but thank you for the work that you're doing of actually helping uplift our Philippine culture. Okay, next would be Christian, co-founder of Aquaphonics. So this one man, this person man is trying to actually help our agriculture industry. Okay, go ahead. So hi, good afternoon guys. So I am Christian Bral Matira, a fifth year electrical engineering student of FPU Institute of Technology. I am also the co-founder of, of Aquaphonics. So what is Aquaphonics? So Aquaphonics is an agri-tech startup that focuses on food production and making the traditional aquaponics system into an automated and self-sustaining aquaponics. So our team decided to tackle this uh, technology since uh, we want to alleviate the condition of food security in the Philippines. And at the same time, uh, to provide nutritious food or nutritious food on your plates, which is very uh, cheap and accessible to everyone. So that's it, guys. Thank you, Christian. We really believe that we need to actually really transform our agriculture industry and there's really no way but to go digital and innovating our agriculture system. Okay, next would be the co-founder of iMoto, Emil. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Emil Osenia, co-founder of iMoto. Uh, our business will specialize on augmented reality and virtual reality for car ad advertisement. So, have you gone to the car show recently? You can't, right? Because of COVID-19. So, our team has decided that why can't we bring the car show room to you through the use of augment, augmented reality and virtual reality? And pretty much our team is composed of people who are already experienced at developing apps and for augmented reality and virtual reality. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Emil. So, of course, a lot of movements are halted nowadays, and a lot of people are for sure of thinking of buying cars, but of course, are scared of going out and being affected by this pandemic. And of course, our last speaker, we would like to hear from the co founder, chief product officer, and lead artist of Pashal, Vanessa Mayral. <laughs> Uh, good day, everyone. I am Vanessa and one of the co-founders of Balanghai. Um, admittedly, I would be one of those people you would consider uncultured or someone who has been out of touch with the Philippine culture. But after going to college and actually learning about the Philippine art forms, the traditions that we have, and also the history, I grew appreciation of familiarizing myself with it. And I, I developed the desire to share, to share it with people. And as uh, as someone who used to, who grew up playing video games, I believe that video games can be as an effective as a tool as any other media platforms in educating people. So with that as my motivation, I took a degree in a Bachelor of Science in Information Technology, specializing in animation game development at FAU Institute of Technology. And through Startup Academy, I was able to meet with people who share the same drive, passion, and sentiment of educating people through video games and also promoting the Philippine identity and its culture to other people. So my team and I co-founded Balanghai, which is going to be driven for the gamification of education. And well, for our very first product, a brief, I guess, a brief introduction to it, um, we are going to tackle about the problem on tourism that is uh, that a pandemic has um, greatly influenced currently, given that since a lot of people are locked in in the, uh, in the comforts of their homes. So we're going to tackle it through digitalism. And that's how we came up with Pashar, which I'm going to um, elaborate a bit later on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vanessa. So um, it's, it's a confluence of gamif um, gamification of education and tourism. It's a very exciting and very interesting concept. So a lot of people, or a lot of younger people are actually in, um, are playing games, especially and dami nakababat sa ating mga mobile, sa ating mga gadgets, no? So, okay. But they, um, I would like to um, allocate the next question for actually learning more about how your platforms or your startups work. 
So if you can just briefly describe to us how it works so that our at attendees or viewers will further understand and have like a really a good view of how things or how your how your solution works. Okay, maybe we'll start with um, Joseph. Okay. <laughs> if you have anything to show, feel free to share your screen. So, Sining is actually exclusive to local Filipino artists, and it, al it also provides an educational platform wherein aspirants or students can actually learn different types of art, whether it can be dancing, music, instruments, drawing, and many more. It is also a social platform where artists, clients, and aspirants can communicate and connect. And an e-commerce system is provided for the buying and selling of art products and services. Feedback system will also be existent where you can rate and review each product or service. And a low-cost subscription will be necessary to access the educational platform and a commission or service charge will take part for each transaction. So basically, Sining connects and will dreams to uplift all artists and all types of art forms here in the Philippines to further have our own and uplift the creative economy here in the Philippines that shows the opportunity that from a $1.5 billion creative economy, it rose to a $1.75, $71 billion one in 2014. So imagine the opportunity and the potential of uplifting the creative economy and supporting our local Philippine arts and tradition. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thanks, Joseph. So that's a very good solution to actually have our creative economy in the Philippines. We have a lot of creative artists that really, really needs your platform. Um, and that goes, I would like to actually hear from Vanessa next since um, your platforms are into creative industries. Okay. So, Pashal is a 3D mobile endless runner game that showcases location in the Philippines, highlighting it, the hidden gems in the country and its culture and traditions. So, what we'll be doing is we're going to promote the different locations of the Philippines. We started off with three locations which are Intramuros, Baguio, and Palawan. And we will be highlighting known, um, known places that is very popular with the tourists. And also, we're not only the locations, we're also going to be highlighting the local traditional clothes that we have in the Philippines for each ethnicity. And also not forgetting about our Filipino delicacies, which are very loved by, uh, by us Filipinos. And for the most part, in terms of pr promoting and sharing of knowledge, we implemented an in-game gallery that would feature actual photos of the locations and the landmarks that we have uh, that we will feature in-game and then accompanied by a trivia description and also possibly an address where the location can be found. So in amidst the pr uh, pandemic, a lot of countries have gone under uh, undergone lockdowns, Philippines included, and therefore we as a citizens of the country are expected to be confined in the comforts of our home and during the lockdown there's a rise in terms of mobile devices usage in terms of using the internet and also playing games and one of the problems that have been identified was the decline in tourism and 70 percent of the uh, decision makers actually do agree that the decline in tourism is something that we should talk about or should be tackled and a quote that I've seen or I've read from World, Trade, uh, World Tourism Organization is that if tourism is said to be uh, the survival of a cultural sector, it should strengthen its branding and identity of its tourist destinations. So given with that information, my team and I went and researched about the problem. And after the, conducting the research, we found out three things that um, that uh, actually uh, highlighted for us. One is that 3.5 billion people are actually use, are using smartphone devices and 90% of them are using the mobile devices to gain access for applications and also playing video games. And that 79% of 
travelers itinerary are influenced by reviews and photos that they find from other travelers. So um, using this information, we decided to tackle the problem through digitalism or the digitization of uh, tourist experience. And that's how we came up with Pashal because it coincides with our desire of promoting Philippines and also tackling the problem of tourism. So that's how we come up with Pasha, which is a 3D mobile endless runner game that showcases locations in Philippines, highlighting the hidden gems of the country and also um, showcasing its culture and traditions. So uh, it's in its earliest stage, stages of development. These are the features that we came up with, introducing Itamuros Baguio Palawan as its initial locations. And then aside from the locations, we're going to highlight local traditional clothes that are worn by different tribes and ethnicities in the Philippines and also not forgetting about the Filipino delicacies that the Filipinos are so in love with and in terms of promoting of tourism we have uh, we came up with a, a gallery that showed uh, that uh, enables the players to see actual photos of landmarks and also an address of where it's located that possibly travelers can use as a reference if ever they're going to be planning their trips to Philippines, hopefully. And for um, microtransactions in order, just uh, just a small way of supporting us, we, uh, we came up with enough purchases that players can buy you through uh, using real-time currency, and but also incentivize ads for those who are not, who don't have the money, but still be able to support us and fund the game. That is all about Pashal. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. That's a very comprehensive um, explanation of what you're trying to do with your solution. Um, and of course, we would also like to hear from others. Let's, um, I think, let's have Christian to tell us more about Aquafunix. So uh, Aquafunix is a combination of aquaculture, which is growing of fish, and uh, hydroponics, which is growing of plants uh, without soil. So our startup company, Aquafunix, so tends to uh, integrate uh, more parameters in order to uh, monitor your aquaponics system. So we have integrated uh, light sensor, uh, pH sensor, water uh, temperature sensor, uh, at the same time, uh, the automated rain catcher set, uh, autom automated rain catcher. So uh, these parameters are integrated in order to ensure uh, the condition of the plants and, uh, and at the same time the fishes you are growing in order to uh, in order to help the system to uh, grow faster so we also have integrated this application uh, in which uh, you can or the users can uh, monitor the system in remote areas so at the same time uh, you can also uh, remotely uh, remotely access your system like for example you want to uh, turn on your uh, light so you can just by clicking the button in the application then you can uh, turn on the light so that's it so that's what is modular aquafunix system uh, goes all right thank you christian let's now hear from regina for dwarm tech dwarm tech uh, we in Dwarm Technology, we are trying to embed different scanners and different advanced technology on the drones because drones nga ngayon lately is very accessible to everyone. There is drones na pang surveying, may drones na for shooting, there are drones na for pesticide spraying na ngayon, and alam nyo na, it can be used in different fields. So we decided to go with search and rescue because Philippines has been bombarded with with different natural disasters because of our geographical location. We are prone to typhoons, which leads to heavy casualties talaga and destruction of crops and properties. So we decided not just for search and rescue, we decided to venture in agriculture tech because we are also rich with uh, natural resources. And because our country, and because we are rich with natural resources, we want to support and improve what we can to see our country prosper in the upcoming years. Uh, so for our swarm technology, our drones are embedded with GPS tracking, thermal scanning, GSM technology, and ultrasonic sensing. And of course, 
we alter the drones to its purpose. So different ang drone namin for the search and rescue, different din ang drone namin for the agriculture. For the search and rescue, it is more uh, more matibay, mas matibay siya and parang kaya mo siyang ipansabak sa gera talaga. We embedded uh, pesticide spraying and our drones can can support very heavy loads for the agriculture. And for the search and rescue, we have AI, thermal, and ultrasonic sensing. So we can find survivors at a much faster rate na I think we can relate to, lalo na ngayon. And compared sa manual research, mas, ma, mas mabilis talaga ang sensing ng pag with technology. And a real-time video and communication para easy ang, ang communication sa mga survivors and sa mga kailangang, ano, kailangan ng information kung saan, pumu- kung saan sila kailangan pumunta. Siguro from the last startup founder, let's hear from um, Emil on how iMoto works. So this is our app, uh, iMoto. Uh, we're going to specialize on augmented reality in the platform of Android phones and iPhone phones as well. Uh, we're going to because in our data, uh, we determined that majority of our uh, customer buyers in collected from our surveys um, stated that they use more of Android and iPhone for using a- augmented reality and virtual reality. For other brands, uh, as stated here, uh, we're going to communicate with other brands. Uh, we're going to operate like a B2B to C setup, uh, business to business to customer setup. Uh, we're going to uh, act like an advertising com- uh, com- company to promote the products of uh, companies like Ferrari, uh, BMW, and such. So, yeah, I think that's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, um, Emil. Um, of course, we've uh, heard from these um, five um, founders, that are founders now. But I would like to go more personal about my question. So you're, you are young kids. I mean, when I was your age or when I was in college, um, um, it's not that I'm not. It's, a, it's not that I'm a, a passive student, but it's not like I'm thinking also of starting my own business, so or or starting my own startup company. So I'm 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 actually very um, I'm actually amazed with the ideas that you came up with. So I would like to ask, what motivated you to actually become a startup entrepreneur? So ano yung hugot? Saan nagagaling? Why are you trying to solve those problems you have identified? Any story that you would willing to share? So I would like to throw that question to anyone who wants to answer. So I won't, I, I'll probably not go to all of you na, pero whoever those who want to, uh, those who want to answer the question. Okay, who, uh, who wants to, to, to answer? So I'm opening the floor. Hello. <laughs> Ayan, Regina. Okay, go. Uh, what motivated us? Actually, uh, we are all engineering students sa dorm. So none of us are actually open into business, into the business world. We just wanted to produce, we just wanted to produce technology that can help with uh, what we are lacking, which is preparedness and awareness when it comes to uh, rescuing and natural disasters, prevention, and stuff. So we can just produce these things eh, for free. So we decided to build a company. So pag may pasok na pera, we can produce. We can produce more. We can help. And yung tech kasi is... Doon papunta tayo eh. Doon papunta yung yung mundo sa innovation ng technology. Kasi I we are seeing 5 to 10 years from now, lahat ng lahat ng ginagawa natin, lahat ng tumatakbo sa buhay natin ngayon will be supported by tech. Okay. All right. Thank you Regina. Another one who might want to answer that question. So, diba? I mean, um while 
most of you can act word with actually I mean a lot of students nowadays are actually affected by the calamity and are experiencing challenges so I hope um, more young people would actually be able to think of possible solutions or opportun find those opportunities in the near future and also create something you know, like what what you have came up with Regina. so yeah how about another another pounder pa so yeah Joseph go ahead <laughs> hello yeah we can hear you as a person who has always loved creating and innovating I perceive that becoming a startup entrepreneur could be the closest way to uplift my fellow Filipino artists. Because as an artist and a, as an artist who represented the country as well, I know sobrang hirap nung wala kaming pera pagdating namin sa US. And knowing that some of our fellow competitors are fully funded by the government, fully funded by the people that actually support them. And when we're here in the Philippines, knowing that we represented the country and the country wouldn't know, like, who's the champion? Ba kayo? That's the first thought that they think, like, can't you support us because we are uplifting the country and supporting the country. And I've seen so many painters who end up selling their art in the streets. And I hope they can have... And I hope that I, we as a team, can provide the platform for them to... Because yung art nila deserve makita ng buong Pinas. Get yeah. and, and not just only in the Philippines, but the whole world as well. Knowing Korea, Japan, we all know their anime, their K-pop, their K-drama. Those are all part of the creative economy. And why can't we have our own creative culture as well that we can brag outside of the country and that the other country can incorporate as well like hindi na lang tayo magugulat yung mga hapon na rin mag magpaparong na rin like get nyo and that actually motivated us all of us in our team are actually computer engineers civil engineers mechanical engineers i'm the only one artist and we ended up having and choosing this product because we actually care so much about the cultural heritage of the filipinos and we really want someday that Philippines will be a major creative hub in the world. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joseph. That's, that's very inspiring of you. No? Um, I would also like to hear from our other startup founders. Naman. So you're very young. You're, you're a student yourselves. So I guess I would like to ask, um, being startup founders, student startup founders, I would like to ask, what are some challenges you are encountering um, in your journey now and what kind of support do you think should be provided in order for you to be able to actually fly and, and become successful um, as founders? Um, siguro kay, I'll, I'll ask Vanessa and then Emil for that. All right. Uh, um, so for the challenges that I encountered with the journey, or majority of us, we didn't have any backgrounds in terms of actually coming up with a business personally i don't have any business background even the terminologies that uh, during the initial um initial program of startup academy people are using this te terminologies that i have never heard about so it was very difficult for me to transition from the tech uh, from the technicalities that i know and the this terminologies in businesses but as uh, with the help of mentors and coaches and you know be them guiding us and explaining us how to go around with the business um it it made the journey a lot easier and it uh, it basically kind of give that give us that safety net that we are we're free to be creative we are free to explore and pursue what we want to pursue with their guidance behind us in, compa in comparison of starting up a business with no guidance from anyone at all. So that that is the biggest challenge. And I think that is also the most important support that you can have. And that is having someone to mentor you and guide you along the way of the journey. I would I would actually, I would like to really agree with you that mentorship is very important, especially knowing from people who have the experience of really 
being a startup founder also, which the FU Tech Startup Academy provides by having all these coaches who are providing weekly sessions. So they are startup founders themselves. Okay, how about you, Emil? Uh, as for us, um, we have difficulty on determining what kind of our what kind our business is. Like, are we B two B or B two C? After a few deliberations from our coaches and our and a few sessions with Startup Academy, uh, we had determined that B, yeah, our business would be B two B two C. And also because we are majority of our team is pretty technical nobody has no has experience in business affairs or such and as for others like in in our track in engineering mechanical engineering where we took uh technopreneurship at our last term uh just uh we, uh i got some difficulty on transferring my knowledge from technopreneurship to this this to the team so yeah uh, that's my that's what happened <laughs> uh, all right that's all. yeah thank you thank you emil so i would like to ask this question to everybody um to every one of you no just a one um so you got a one answer per person so what is that one key takeaway that you have learned or one um very interesting lesson in your startup journey um that you value so much so far so let's start with Christian. Uh, Christian, sorry, you're on mute. Uh, one word lang, ma'am. Kasi I have... Uh, not uh, necessarily one word. Or like one word or like one thing that's your like the most valuable key takeaway in your startup journey so far. So yung uh, key things na natutunan ko in the Startup Academy journey is that uh, the, start the, the Startup Academy provides us the critical thinking, uh, knowing the trend, and strategic and planning skills in order to have yung pinaka parang foundation ng isang startup company. So having this mindset or having these skills is a uh, essential to a startup right. in order for it. Thank to you, Christian. How so, about you, Joseph? Hello. Bawal umulit na sagot. <laughs> so. Um, Startup Academy provided us this, um, blessed us rather with a lot of passionate people regarding to having their own startup. And luckily enough, the a startup, we I am surrounded. And I think yung pinaki takeaway ko is surrounding yourself with passionate people and having that same mindset that Startup Academy trained us is to be on the same page, have the same genuine purpose as a team in order for your start startup to be successful yes that is my major right. takeaway thank you joseph how about you regina uh for me uh it's really an honor to turn uh, these ideas into reality and uh following on joseph uh, yeah, everyone in startup, because since I'm a coach, I'm a coach in Startup Academy. And uh, being a, in a startup business for two to three years, it really sucks the life out of you. Nahaka unmotivate. So being exposed to Startup Academy and, uh, no, and you know, watching these very passionate people talk about pursue the field they are very passionate nakaka nakaka ano siya nakaka motivate siya lalo na ngayon na uh, it's very depressing lately it gives us something to you know to fight for to, to work for to work uh, to to wake up every day for and thank you <laughs> all right thank you thank you Regina how about you Emil uh Ma'am, I think um, what I gained from this startup academy journey is I was able to break out from my shell from because I'm really shy. <laughs> I I wouldn't be here though if talking right now. But yeah, um, break, the breaking of shell. 
That's all I all can right. tell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Emil. And of course, Vanessa. Uh, my main key uh, takeaway from the whole journey is that don't be afraid of widening your network. Uh, kasi po talagang mahiya hindi na ako <laughs> hindi hindi po ako pasala kaya kahalubilo ng tao and so that's one of my learnings na don't limit yourself to people especially like there's benefit of finding similar people to you pero there's also a greater benefit of finding people who are different from you na who share who has their different expertise and kahit parang nakakatakot siya or nakakaba na magkakaiba kayo as long as you have that same vision, as Joseph has mentioned earlier, as long as you have that uh, same vision for and drive, sa gusto niyong mangyari, it will work out. Yun po yung pinaka key learning na nakuha ko. All right. Thank you, Vanessa. And I guess this is our um, closing or like a uh, last question. No? Remember, just ko na yung questions na to. Um, why do you think um, it is important to create um, more startup entrepreneurs or more young entrepreneurs and what advice um, especially that the whole FU community is watching right now um, for our feature um, what advice can you give to young people like you who are aspiring to become startup founders of becoming or aspiring to become entrepreneurs themselves so okay let's um, I would like to, 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 to give the floor to everyone no? okay uh, maybe we can start with Christian uh, so I think uh, we need to create more uh, startup entrepreneurs, mainly because uh, it spurs economic growth. So uh, it creates a uh, new wealth, uh, new wealth, and at the same time, uh, it creates or it, it increases the employment in the Philippines, and also it, it can create uh, social changes in which it can improve the quality of life. Then for the uh, young entrepreneurs. Uh, why do we need young entrepreneurs? Be, uh, because uh, we need young entrepreneurs because uh, it can uh, it can improve their uh, soft skills, particularly yung communication skills, which is very vital in a uh, entrepreneur. And in any other uh, uh, in, any, in, in any other uh, uh, businesses. So parang yung communication kasi parang yun yung pinaka importante sa lahat. Kaya feeling ko pag May, uh, but there's more young entrepreneurs out there, so uh, they can, uh, yun nga, they can, they can improve their uh, soft skills. So, what advice I can, what I, what advice can I give to these young entrepreneurs? So, my only advice that I can give is to uh, know the purpose or know, know the why, why, know the why in creating your startup because knowing the why is eventually. Uh, is eventually everything parang everything will follow just know the why yeah, i think you've watched startup the korean drama because he said uh, the the lady there i forgot her name she said na, if you're very clear with your why everything will follow so when there parang when when um what's his name han ji pyong was questioning um so um startup because um sabi niya walang walang it's it's too costly. So ayon. Thank you, thank you, Christian. How about Emil? Um, I think the importance of young entrepreneurship is that I think we have reached the point here in the Philippines that we stagnated uh, in improving uh, everything. Like um, we are no longer developing our own technologies and such. So. Uh, yeah, we really need an, more entrepreneurship here rather than people going to the other countries and making their making their business businesses there. So yeah, that's all I think. Yeah, thank you, Emil. I do agree that um, creating more entrepreneurs is actually one uh, one key answer to reducing unemployment here in the country. So it's really more um, creating um, livelihood and entrepreneurship opportunities and at the same time, job generation follows. Okay, thank you. Emil, how about Regina? Hello. <laughs> Sorry. 
nasabi ni ata ni Christian lahat, inuwi yung, inuwi yung mga sagot daming lahat. I guess, uh, mag a na lang ako. Uh, for me, a youth entrepreneur is not, ano, hindi lang dun sa entrepreneur, but youth ano, technologists, I know every everything na kina cultivate natin sa startup academy. We need it right now. It is great because uh, youth or kami has a new take on things, eh, a fresher outlook. And since we are exposed at technology at a young age, we are exposed to uh, what is happening na ngayon palang exposed na kami. It is one of our forte. We believe. I believe now we can expand it. We can. Uh, we can improve it more. And uh, I think my uh, my uh, ano tawag dito quote or something. Pag uh, as time passes on sa sa mga business kasi mawawalan ka ng motivation jan. And when motivation left the building, discipline should always be there. It should always take over. Right. Thank you, Regina. I do agree. I think you're trying to say that a lot of young people nowadays are actually problem solvers. So, yeah, uh, more opportunities because you have a different take on things. That, that I agree also. Um, of course, let's have um, Vanessa and then we'll go Joseph for last answer. Okay, all right. Medyo mahirap na kung sundan kasi nasabi na lahat eh. <laughs> Pero, um, bali, so simula pa lang po bata, lagi na naririnig eh, kabataan ng pag-asa ng bayan. So, import, para po sa akin, it's really important to have more youth entrepreneurs. Uh, yeah, youth entrepreneurs. Kasi, one learning din na nakuha ko from Startup Academy is that you tackle business with the idea of coming up a solution to an existing problem. So the more na meron pong entrepreneurship na nagaganap, more businesses are came up with it, entrepreneurs, we are solving problems that are existing sa Philippines. So we're trying to help it grow as an economy at the same time giving the convenience of the people. So like providing job opportunities nga po and may iwasan natin yung, like if it grows, may iwasan natin yung mga pag send ng mga tao sa ibang bansa and helping them thrive instead of actually helping the Philippines thrive more. So, ang ano ko po in terms of siguro sa advice, yung personally, it's a struggle yung to take that one step of pursuing business. Kasi para, pag inisip mo business, pera, like kaya ko ba, enough ba ko para do sa business? Like, don't, don't under, uh, under, sell yourself I, I try to develop your confidence kasi minsan that one step will lead you to what great wonders in life so it don't wag, don't hesitate <laughs> like it's great to have control pero never hesitate especially if you have that vision na you you believe it's gonna lead to beautiful things in the future in the thank you vanessa that's wonderful and of course joseph Hello. Yeah. Hi. So, as part of the youth, um, we should be more engaged. And sabi nga ni Regina, we see the world in a different perspective. And creating a brand new and better world should start with us. It's to find solutions, uplift the economy, the community, and build the future. Kaya nga siya tinawag na start up. You won't go up if you want to start. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a great <laughs> so, idea. <yeah, so, laughs> get so vale always try always try and i think yung advice na mabibigay ko is trying is a way of learning and never trying at all will equate to failure so yun lang po. Yun lang po. all right thank you thank you joseph no just hearing all of you so you're just five among the 20 plus teams being incubated by the F innovation center i mean it's a very inspiring afternoon for all of us. I'm mean, hearing you young kids think how you think right now. No, I, I can see a lot of doors opening for you rather, um, once you go out to the real world. And thank you for already starting to change our world by actually yeah, trying to actually solve real life, um, um, real life 
um, societal problems that you're trying to provide solution for. So that's very consistent with what we're trying to do here with, um, with the EVI Innovation Center, which is creating niche, the next generation of nation builders by creating um, innovators, technologists, and entrepreneurs. So as we officially end this session, I would like to thank all of you, um, our speakers for this afternoon, of course, our director, Roland Garcia, the FEU Tech Management, especially our Senior Executive Director, Dr. Benson Tan, and Attorney Jana Montenola, and of course, the organizers of the Philippine Startup Week for actually um, giving us this platform to introduce to a bigger community what FEU Innovation Center is doing and, of course, what we are trying to envision for the next um, couple of years, so our future programs. So I would also like to echo what our management mentioned during their special messages. We encourage every one of you to actually create, innovate, and collaborate with us. Again, maraming salamat po at magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. This is Janina from FEU Innovation Center.